the fundamental disagreement is not between uh, two professions or two groups of people, but with two forms of thought. After all, the neuroscientists are primarily concerned with pursuing empirical questions, uh, which are ultimately testable by experiment and can be falsified or verified. The pursuit of those experiments presupposes a conceptual framework, uh, a, a conception of what is meant by such expressions as, as the mind, uh, the will, uh, perception, memory, imagination, and so forth. That's the conceptual framework which is presupposed. And if there is unclarity about it, the unclarity will spill over into the design of the experiments and into the interpretation of the experiments. So you're actually saying that because they have their concepts wrong, that they will get wrong results from all those fancy experiments? Uh, two or three different things may happen. Uh, one would be that the experiments are badly designed because the concepts are confused. Let me give an example. A great deal of work was done and is being done on voluntary movement and voluntary action. And the framework within which that those ranges of experiments are done is the following, that to move your hands or any other part of your body voluntarily is to perform, uh, uh, to make a decision or to perform an act of willing which then causes the movement. And all the experiments are based on that presupposition. Now that presupposition is a bit of 17th century metaphysics, not 21st century science and has been embedded in both philosophical and scientific thought ever since the 17th century. Now, if you pause to reflect, you will notice that every word I'm uttering at the moment is uttered voluntarily, intentionally. None of the words I'm saying are accidental, and so far there aren't any slips of the tongue. But I didn't perform an act of willing before every word I uttered or before every sentence I uttered. Every Utterance of mine is voluntarily, but it's not preceded by an act of will. So the concepts are wrong and they need a philosopher to point them to their uh, being wrong. Let's go into the very famous uh, experiments, one of them being that someone has to do a test of whatever kind, it's been repeated many times. And even before someone decides, well, I push the red button or the green button, the hand already moves. So you haven't decided yet, nothing happened in the brain so to speak, and the hand already moves. So many neuroscientists say your body already shows the decision before your mind is even involved. Well, that presupposes a sharp division between mind and body, which is itself questionable. Uh, it also presupposes that every voluntary movement of mind is preceded by an act of will or an act of decision. And that's just false, as I tried to explain at the moment. I am, after all, talking perfectly voluntarily to you at the moment, but my speech is not preceded by hundreds of individual acts of will. So there's a misunderstanding about what exactly voluntary action is. And it's only because of that misunderstanding that they can think that they have adequate data to show that the brain decides uh, and later on lets you know that a decision has been made. So, so how would you say that we do have a free will? Where would that free will be? Can you, can you point at the free will in, in a body or in a person? The, well, the, free, the free will is a capacity that human beings have. Uh, and it's a capacity with two aspects to it. On the one hand, when we act freely, we could have done otherwise. So I may move my hand, but I could have refrained from moving it. And that's something which in normal human action is pervasive. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, when I decide to do something, form the intention to do something, then I can do what I intend to do, and then I'm acting freely. Uh, both, of, b both of those aspects have to be present for, a, for an action to be an action for which you are answerable, an action for which you're voluntary, uh, which, which for which you're responsible. Um, I don't think there's any question but that human beings have free will in their normal daily lives under normal circumstances. There are circumstances, of course, where cr criminals may plead diminished responsibility. There are circumstances under which, as a result of brain damage of one sort or another, 
we are not capable of controlling our, our own behaviour. Of course, but, but...